It's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I've done crazy shit. That's <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Michael Sarah. You know him as George Michael on the hit show Arrested Development and award winning roles in films like Juno, Super Bad, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and many more. And you can catch him in the Waverly Gallery, premiering on Broadway this fall. Michael Sarah, welcome to the hey, show. Thank you. Happy How are you with spicy food? I like spicy food, I think. There was this, this amazing Thai restaurant in LA called Jitlada, and they have like at the back of the menu, the like something challenge. And you took it on? And me and a friend did it. My friend Eric Edelstein and me, we sat and we got mussels. You can get anything with this sauce. And they bring you like a pink, like Pepto-Bismol milkshake <laughs> and like a bunch of, you know, cabbage and stuff. And you just go bite for bite. And it's like, okay, let's do another. It's like this weird ride you take with your friend. And we did that. Well, let's go on another ride, my <laughs> man. <laughs> Great. Can I ask you how you're sitting on this stool? Are your feet both on the metal bar? Uh, yeah, they're both on the metal bar. I got one on the ground, bar. and I don't feel like I'm sitting. In you know, the right I way. mix it up every once in a while. I feel yeah. like throwing it off. There's like a little the, style with it. I'm gonna straddle the thing that's like the leg of the table, and just really actually join you here. Whatever makes you comfortable, Michael. Do I look more comfortable? Now? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So I want to start by taking it back to the early days when you were a nine-year-old doing commercial auditions by the hundreds. In the highly competitive world of child commercial acting, did you ever get backstabbed or double-crossed by another fifth grader? There were like two kids who were like the Kobe Bryants of like the child commercial ring, mm. and they just booked everything. And you'd go to a commercial, and there'd be like dozens of kids and all their moms, and you knew their moms too. And some of the moms were extra intimidating and weird. But there was like, if you, if you saw like Luca there, you'd be like, well shit, why'd I even come? <laughs> I might as well go yeah, home. Yeah, like, this is a wash. <laughs> and then in our research, we found an old Pillsbury commercial yeah. that you did early on. You actually got mm -hmm. to poke the Doughboy's belly. That was the second job I ever got. And after that, I never booked another commercial. It was just those two, but I went on hundreds of auditions. Well, Luca was there. Luca was taking all the it. work. Michael Cedar <laughs> was killing it. I think it was like, you know, it's just like, I don't know. It's like, there's a C stand with an X, and there you do that for like a hundred times because that's very important that you do it in the right place. Yeah. And then, but the whole commercial was like a CGI extravaganza. Like there's this, I'm making cookies and the cookie dough and comes to the life. Big and the big cookie yeah. is like chasing the other one. Yeah, a whole thing. they went for it. They like kind of splurged on their <laughs> special effects for this commercial. All right, so this next one is the heartbeat sauce. Sounds good. That's delicious, actually. So when Arrested Development was reborn in 2013, you took on an expanded role, not only as one of the show's stars, but then also a fixture in the writing room. There's a lot of lore surrounding writers' rooms, and yeah. I know that your experience was limited, but in that limited experience, I wonder, do the good ideas just naturally float to the top, or is there an art in being the loudest voice in the room or a pitch huh. man? Good question. Um, yeah, I think sometimes it's like a lot of timing. If you have a good idea, maybe you shouldn't say it right away. Wait you know, until things kind of, there's like a lull, and then pretend you just came up with it. <laughs> but yeah, no, a lot of times the good stuff floats to the top. There is some kind of filter system that just kind of happens naturally, and it can be, I think, kind of a political thing or, or a personality thing, it's, but there's like a balance to it. You kind of learn your place like a family almost. It's delicious, that one. Dom, put it in the bag. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We'll give you that one to do go. Do we get some gifts? That's cool. Mm -hmm. You do, Thank you get a little that. swag bag. That's awesome. Oh, this is from Thunder Bay, Ontario. And you're from Ontario. I am from Ontario. Beautiful. Rep for the homies. Yeah, they're doing a nice job up there. Just says pepper sauce, that's a little thing. Can I ask you, like, um, you must be kind of like, by virtue of the show, like, tuned into the world of hot sauce? A little bit something. more than I'd yeah. like to be, yeah. Very nicely curated, I have to say. Thank you. Even the color scheme, like I guess you put some thought into how the, the color goes. It's all Schoenberger, who helps put <laughs> this whole thing together, he has sleepless nights every season, <laughs> every season. Oh my God. 
So when you're a beloved character that's in cult movies like Scott Pilgrim or Superbad, you end up sometimes having a persona that takes on a life of its own. Have you seen the way the internet has made you its own via memes and corners of Reddit? Do you ever poke around? Does it scare not, you? Are you fascinated by it? Maybe it scares me. I don't think I <laughs> want to know. Not that I, you know, it's kind of nice in a way, but I'm not just a big internet guy, really. Your friend and super bad co-star Jonah Hill right. has this larger-than-life online persona in oh. large part because he's like a street-style icon. Right. Have you ever heard of Jonah Hill Day? Yeah, well, from Jonah I heard of that. I was with Jonah last week, and he went to Jonah Hill Day that morning. I saw him I was so proud Jonah of him. Hill Day. I mean, that's so brave. It's great, though. I mean, I love that he did that. Because it's my buddies that put it on. And okay, so, you like, know those guys. Mm -hmm, okay. Lawrence and James. Right. Shout out Failing Upwards. So when Jonah was on Kimmel, he was like, I was too shy to go the first year. Yeah. And then the second one, it was just ringing off and he had such a great time. Yeah, it sounds like a great thing to do. I mean, I was inspired by Jonah doing that. At first, I think it'd be scary, but then it's like he had a great time. Right. I, I mean, also, I think he like just got himself in the frame of mind of like, I'm just going to go be this guy. Like, it's like kind of a character or something. Like the person they want you to be or the, whatever you are to them on that day. Just go be that. I mean, it's like going and shooting something or something. It's like just kind of take yourself outside of yourself and have fun with it. Can we expect to see you in attendance at next year's Jonah Hill Day? That sounds fun. <laughs> I told Jonah he should go like every, like a like scatter when he goes. Like, don't go the third year. Go the fourth. Yeah. People will be like, oh, every two years he goes. Keep them guessing. Then go the fifth. Yeah. On their <laughs> toes. Just, <laughs> just completely, <laughs> in a way, terrorize them. <laughs> So this is this guy. This is the son of zombie. Great. Okay. I'm going to bite first, ask questions later. That's <laughs> <laughs> what they taught us in the academy. That one is just so delicious right away. Sweet. So as you mentioned in your intro, you're in an upcoming Broadway play called the Waverly Gallery. Yeah. And then earlier this year with Lobby Hero, so clearly it's not a one-off experiment for you. Yeah. What draws you back to the stage? So I was working on Lobby Hero with Kenneth Lonergan, who wrote it, and he also wrote Waverly Gallery. And then I I, I, I think from my agent, I heard that they were doing um, the Waverly Gallery with Elaine May. So I emailed Kenny right away and said, please let me like sweep the floor to be there because I love Elaine May. And I thought, oh my God, to have an opportunity to work with her would be just amazing. And something I would be so jealous of, whoever got to do it if I wasn't doing it. And I would always regret missing that chance. What's the biggest difference when you're trying to target your next project, when you're reading a movie script versus when you're reading a play script? I mean, a play, it's a big commitment of time. And um, it, you're stuck. Like, you can't do other things at the same time. And choosing a movie, you just don't want it, it to be something that people see and that you're embarrassed by, I think, which can happen. But it also is like who you get to, you know, who I don't know. I mean, like, the reason I really love acting for a living is that you get to work with people that are amazing that you admire. So this next one is the Los Calientes. We're calling it the sauce of summer. Hmm. That's really tasty. Well, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. All right. You do not have an Instagram, which really throws a wrench, but we have a workaround. We've gone to the Gettys and pulled some interesting Michael Sarah photos that just need more context. So I'll just show you the picture and you tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, laptop, please. Sounds great. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. It's a funny job. You lift a giant block <laughs> with a computer on it. Bill, the legend of Bill has really grown quite a bit. First things first, looks like you're just minding your business. Oh, in I remember LA. that day. That's a story. That's a crazy story. That was a horrible moment for me. Really? Yes. So this guy, um, I used to live in Los Feliz in Los Angeles, and that was a moment when I was like kind of famous, or had a movie coming out, or some reason why someone would like want to photograph me and spend their day doing that. So there was this guy like in my neighborhood stalking me. I, this is the only time this has ever happened to me in my life. It was a very strange experience. He just wouldn't stop. He was following me all day. I was riding around on my bike, and he was enjoying my, like, fear. You know, it was just this, like, thing where you saw this other side of people, and I was like, I get it. Like, take the photo and go. But he, like, enjoyed putting me in a state of, like, fear or agitation to get another kind of photo or something. I went up to his window. I, like, shook his hand. I was like, please stop. You're really scaring me now. Like, this is getting really weird. 
And he was like, okay. And that was what made it really weird. He was like, yeah, I got it, man. Yeah, totally. I'll leave you alone. And then he kept doing it. And then I could never, and then he would just be always like a little far away in his car. I went into a movie theater, the Los Feliz 3, and watched a movie for two hours and came out and he was waiting. He, he, he had waited. And I was like, don't, don't follow me home, man. Like, I don't want you to come know where I live and like be a splinter in my, you know, leg for the rest of my life. Wow. So it was really, and at one point I just like got off my bike and sat down on the curb and he, he like drove by looking for me. I was like, dude, this is like really stressing me out. Can you stop? And then he like saw that and stopped and went away. It was wow. a weird day, man. I was like, this is f weird. I didn't mean to dig up any trauma. No, I'm glad I could explain <laughs> it. It was years ago, you know, that hasn't happened to me again. Is that enough of a bite, to be fair? I don't want to qualifies, no. Puss. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't, you can go in for another one. I will, just so that people don't call me puss. <laughs> so, Superbad celebrated its 10th anniversary last year. What I'd like to do here is dig up some of the lore surrounding that film, because it means so much to so many people. And you can just tell me if it's fact, or if it's fiction, or if there's a bigger story behind that. Does that sound good? Fun. All right. True or false? Evan Goldberg's brother, Dave, drew all the dick drawings That's in true. Superbad. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, we watched the movie like hundreds of times. When it came out, we were promoting it. and I think the dicks are like at the end of the movie, over the credits. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dick pictures and people, it was like a perfect emotional button for people. <laughs> they were like, yes, they really wanted to see all those. Is it true that Christopher Mitz-Plasse pissed off Jonah Hill during the yeah, audition? Is there a definitely, story there? Definitely. <laughs> when he left the room, Jonah was like, no, not him. What happened? He was like irritated by him. I think he felt that Chris was like kind of getting the better of him comedically, stopping Jonah, like like kind of like blocking Jonah's like funny jabs, which made it so funny. I mean, it made Jonah like double down and Jonah getting irritated made him funnier, made Jonah funnier. And Chris just deflected, like he just, he, he is a guy who does not care in real life. He's really an admirable guy. He shrugs everything off. He does not care what anybody thinks about him. And that was really apparent. <laughs> and in an audition setting that you're like a rock star if you have that quality, you know. Did you do an hour long dance for the Super Band yeah, DVD? I did. So that was Evan Goldberg's idea. Evan's a really fun and funny and weird guy. He was like, it was like right when Blu-rays were like starting to happen. He was like, with a Blu-ray, we can have a DVD menu <laughs> that the menu screen can be an hour long and it won't loop. He was like, so I want you to dance for an hour so that somebody will watch the DVD menu waiting for it to loop and it just like never will until after an hour. So I was like, great. And then so we did that like after a day of shooting, we went into this like studio at Sony with a green screen and I danced for an hour nonstop. There are a million different references to super bad and hip hop lyrics, so I want to bounce two off of you, and you can tell me which one you're prouder of, okay? Great. So this first one is from Big Sean. I'm unusual as shit. I'm super bad. Your girl probably doodling my dick. And then this next one is from Kanye West off Forever. Old money, Benjamin Button. What? Nothing. <laughs> now super bad chicks giving me McLovin. Kanye West said that? Mm hmm Oh my god, I didn't know that. That's cool. I like the Kanye West one. Jonah told me that he met Eminem and Eminem like um, recited the first 10 minutes of Superbad to him, like had it memorized and did our voices and stuff. How did Jonah react to that? Uh, you know, like, <laughs> like shock. Like, I mean, when he told me, I was like stunned by that. It's so weird. Before we go on, sure. do you think I could just floss? I have like a piece of chicken in one tooth and it's got too much of my attention. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Is there floss? Right? Do we have floss on set? Or a toothpick? You can get toothpick. Thanks. Sorry, yeah, I'm gonna throw a wrench in the in. whole thing. No, that's. I just don't want to be. I like <laughs> fighting that, and it's like still spicy. So every time I try and wedge it out, it's it's a uh, it's an obstacle. <laughs> it's a re kick of heat. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Someone who had floss. There's oh, also perfect. toothpicks you can. I'll just do that. Your Sorry, I'll, just, I'll be five seconds with this. Sorry. You can film it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we will. All right. So this next one is the Bunsters Black Label. It's out of Australia. It's come a long way. 16 out of 10 heat. It's weird. <laughs> that makes them sound kind of stupid. <laughs> they don't understand math or something. Just say 10 out of 10. 
I was annoyed recently at a farmer's market because um, there was this woman selling soups. And some of them were really hot. She had a rating system. She had like, um, this one's a two out of five, this one's a three out of five, this one's a four out of five. And she had like 10 soups, but there was no five out of five. I was like, then why don't you make the one that's four out of five the five, if that's the hottest? Like, what is five? If, shouldn't five be the hottest? And shouldn't that exist? Did so you have imaginary this conversation? Numbers and none of the, no, I didn't. I wanted to confront her, but she's just a little woman selling soup. I'm gonna embarrass her in front of her potential customers. I walked away and quietly said it to my mom and girlfriend. Class how move. stupid she was. Class move. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this next one is the bomb. Is it pretty hot? Uh, historically, yes. They make a big deal of it on the bottle. Warning, the sauce is extremely hot. Consume one drop at a time with extreme caution. It's hot. It's tasty though. Into it. I like Chipotle. No problem. I mean, a little pain. In the mouth. <laughs> it's okay. I'm fine. <laughs> I've done crazy shit with this. It's <clears throat> so not to get too meta, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about the dynamics of a celebrity interview because it's something that we think about all the time at this freak show that you've so gamely decided to join in on. I heard you make an interesting point about how sometimes your Hollywood interviews can cause a bit of a kerfuffle simply because you can't match the gigawatt energy of whoever is in front oh, yeah. of you or the platform. True. Can you explain that for me? Well, it's like <clears throat> trying to talk normally. <sighs> My tongue hurts. Um, you're doing like a junket and, sometimes, and then you have like 10 people roll through in a day. I might just be drooling and not know it. It's okay. It's the show. And um, yeah, everybody kind of, that's like their 10 minutes and they've like sometimes prepared a bit that you haven't signed off on and you have no interest in participating <laughs> in. You think you're just there as a human being to talk about your movie, which is pretty boring, granted. But sometimes you just don't think they have any taste. And now, now I'm like forced to like go along with it or else I'm like throwing a wrench in your thing and I seem like I'm not fun. Sometimes if you just don't want to go with their energy, you seem like a confrontational asshole or something, but to go with their energy would be worse, I think. You'd seem like a total dipshit. So it's, I kind of lose-lose. No, listen, I connect with it as a guy who hosts a show where we have 10 scorching hot chicken wings laid out in front of our guests, you know? Yeah. <laughs> when are the scorching hot ones gonna start? Oh! <laughs> This one really slow build, or because it's not as hot as the previous one, I find. Yeah. But we order by the uh, Scoville unit. Oh, which okay. Is like a, yeah, you know I saw I mean? you talking to Padma about the Scoville unit. Oh, wow. There you go. And I really enjoyed your thoughts about it, <laughs> or her thoughts, which was like it's kind of like an imaginary measurement. Or exactly, exactly. So, in addition to being one of the most famous actors in Hollywood, I know that you're very much a film buff, a student of the game. So, what I want to do is give you a series of universal life moments that maybe the power of film could help someone through, and then you try to recommend a movie film that Chris for said this kind of life thing. moment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's challenging, man. Is there a movie that you'd recommend to a kid who's feeling like an outcast? I feel so on the spot. Well, The Sandlot comes to mind right away, but the lesson of that movie is kind of hard. It's like, well, just find a group of friends that you fit in perfectly with and you'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> if you're stuck in a rut of your day-to-day -day existence, you want to expand your mind. What film would Michael Sarah pull off the shelf? A rut of day-to-day -day existence. Mm -hmm. Something that's like a fantasy thing, I guess. Maybe World on a Wire, the Fassbender movie, just because that's like a really fun science fiction movie. Can you give me a movie that you'd recommend when you're tripping balls on psychedelic mushrooms? Fantastic Planet, be fun. Something animated, or like um, Spirited Away. I just watched that with my niece. It's a little scary for kids, I think. I got it for her for her eighth birthday, and we were watching it, and like halfway through, I was kind of like, is this too scary? But I think she was a little disturbed by it. All right, Michael Sarah. All right. So this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition oh, around shit. here to put a little extra on the last wing. Okay. 
You don't have to if you don't want to. I will. It should be no problem for you. My friends, I was with my friends last night, mm -hmm. and they're a couple, and they have a bet one of the, whether I'll finish this. Really? You know, yeah, one is against me, one is for me. I'm well, supposed to text them after. The one who's against you. What an idiot. Looking like an idiot. Yeah, an underestimation. All right. And then you bite right on the sauce. You bite right on the sauce, <laughs> okay. and that would be the point. Right. But before you do, yeah. here we are at our hot sauce journey's end. And you're so expressive. You can say so much without even so much as uttering a word. So what we're going to do here huh. is we're going to stimulate our bodies with a bajillion Scovilles huh. and then follow the journey of Pepper X entirely through facial expressions. Okay. Got it. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> I, fun to watch. I can break. I can't. <laughs> I really can't. Doing a lot. I, <laughs> I love that. Like how much happens in the space of a second that we don't really realize. Mm -hmm. I would love to watch like a 10 minute version of all this stuff you just did. Well, let's loop like it for an hour, it. put it on the next DVD menu, and look at you, Michael Sarah. I don't know who your friend is who Kid said that shit. you couldn't Kid run shit. the board. This but one look was at spicy. you. <laughs> look at you, you king. All the way through, 10 chicken wings up. 10 chicken wings down. Bright red. Red in the face a little bit, glowing around the eyes. But Handsome. I honestly think that it's like a reborn yeah, Michael Cera. So good. Looking so good. I would love to swim right now. This camera, this camera, or this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Right away. <laughs> All right. Guys, <laughs> I'm going to do this play on Broadway with Elaine May. And we're going to go until January. God bless her. She's 86, I think, and she's gonna give an amazing, amazing historical performance to us, and nobody should miss it. Especially if you love her as much as I do, which you should. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Michael, good job. Oh, my floss, Chip. <laughs> when you eat the actual pepper. Yeah. Is it like you get a high? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. do. Like, uh, cause like, like even sometimes on the show, like I always make this joke that like that's why it's keeping us going is that I'm just yeah. chasing the yeah. dragon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right. true. Like sometimes I'll go over and be like, I have like a nice little head brush off yeah. of it, you know. Yeah. But then same with the pepper is that like when you eat a Carolina Reaper, yeah, it's sort of uh, dr drug like in nature. Yes. But then you, you go calm home. Down and, yeah. Yeah. But then you go home and then you're just in the fetal position, basically oh. giving yourself food poisoning, and then it's you know it's 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 it's, it's up and it's down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of exhilarating. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Spice Lords. Come here. I want to let you in on a little secret. You already know about the Hot One subscription box. Every month, we send you three of the best damn hot sauces you've ever had in your life. But this is the big announcement, the moment you've been waiting for, the thing that people will not stop tweeting me about. If you want the last dab redux, with Chocolate Pepper X and Pepper X, the way to do it, sign up for a Hot One subscription box before August 15th. If you already get the subscription box, you're good to go. Throw your feet up. The last dab with Chocolate Pepper X and Pepper X, it's on its way to your doorstep. But if you wanna be one of the first people to get it, the way to do it, sign up for a Hot One subscription box. You already know the drill. Heatness.com, heatness.com to sign up. Who appreciates his Spice Lords? I do. What the? No. Don't dab me, bro! Ah!